Yes, hello everybody and welcome back to the Dynasty Hot Seat, the only Dynasty show out there that is a certified inferno. Thank you so much for joining in again this week. We're going to have another look at these 2023 rookies. 2.0 this time, looking at the best minds in the industry, seeing where they have drafted these rookies and then getting the average score and telling you where these people are landing. So let's start off by saying thank you so much for joining. You know, if you're new here, this is a huge, you know, commenting show here. I want to know what you think about these rookies. Are they too high? Are they too low? Who do you expect to be higher by the time this ends? Who do you expect to be lower by the time this ends? So please comment with anything you want. And of course, if you're new here, please give us a subscribe as well. It really does help. We're on the march to 200. Hopefully we can keep that going so without further ado why don't we get started on week two of our rookie reviews so to start off with no surprise right Bijan robinson even though these are all super flex drafts Bijan robinson holds that number one position and if you're wondering where have i gathered all this information you know, they're from Fantasy Football Land, they're from Destination Devi, the Fantasy Football Flock, Fantasy Pros, and DLF this week. So that's where we're gathering this. All of these drafts have been made within the last seven days. So this is as recent as you can get in terms of your rookie ADP. Bijan Robinson stays at one. Guys, we don't really need to talk about Bijan Robinson, do we? He's probably going to go number one in your startup drafts. Every single one that you're in, not startup drafts, we keep. <laughs> He might even, but probably not. He's going to go number one in your rookie drafts everywhere you are. So we don't have to talk too much about Bijan. Let's have a look at our number two player. And we have our first move from last week. Because CJ Stroud has overtaken Bryce Young as the 102. Moving up one spot from last week where he was at the 103. You know, CJ Stroud and Bryce Young... It'll almost come down to just, you know, personal preference. There's going to be no consensus number two and number three here. I think it will be those two guys and it'll be, you know, what do you prefer? What kind of things happen at the combine? And probably more than anything else, it's going to be landing spot. That's usually the, you know, the tiebreaker whenever prospects are so closely ranked. In this case, Stroud and Young, you know, one of them could end up going to the Texans with a terrible offensive line. One of them could end up going, you know, to a much better situation. So we'll have to wait and see where they both land before we can really decide where they're going to be. And of course, we talked about it there. Let's just show Bryce Young in at number three. We have another mover in at number four. Moving up one spot from last week, Jackson Smith and Jigba taking over that spot as the first wide receiver off the board. He comes in at position number four. 104 in our rookie mock draft here. Jack and Smith and Chigba. You know, you do hear you don't all it's not all good that you hear about Jackson Smith and Jigba. You do hear rumblings about, you know, oh, he didn't play well last year and you know he was injured this and injured that. But I think to get a real good grasp of what Jackson Smith and Jigba can do, you have to kind of go back and look at the tape not from last year, but but the year before and see how fantastic. He looked then, so I expect him to come into the NFL. I expect him to go on the first round, and I expect him to be a really good player. So I don't really have any problems if you're taking Jackson Smith and Jigba as your number one receiver off the board. And let's have a look who's at number five, just falling one space down. It's Jameer Gibbs, the Alabama running back. That guy, he looks better every time I look at him play. I really like what I'm seeing, you know, kind of that. Could be that kind of Alvin Kamara type player. I think he's faster than Alvin Kamara as well from what I can see. So, yeah, I really like Jameer Gibbs. I think if you're getting him at five in your draft, that is excellent. That really shows you how good this draft class is. Is someone like Jameer Gibbs can go at number five overall. You can just have a look at last year's draft class. How high do you think? Leave a comment. How high do you think Jameer Gibbs will go in last year's draft class? Because... I think people take Jameer Gibbs ahead of Kenneth Walker, who was sort of consensus, you know, that running back two, consensus pick two for a lot of people ahead of even Drake London. Do you think Jameer Gibbs will go ahead of Kenneth Walker? You know, not knowing what we know now, obviously, about Kenneth Walker, who's some people's dynasty running back number one overall. But I think 
Jameer Gibbs is a better prospect. So let me know what you think. And uh, then moving on to number six, someone else who's moving up one spot, you know, Quentin Johnson, absolute monster of a wide receiver. It's going to be interesting to see where he lands and, you know, what quarterback he ends up with. You want him with someone who's going to sling it down the field. Cleveland Browns would be interesting. Pair him up, you know, with Amari Cooper, with Deshaun Watson, who we know loves to throw the ball downfield. Chargers could be an interesting spot for him as well. Mike Williams cannot stay healthy. And if he does, I mean, good luck playing against, you know, those two guys, right, flying downfield. Another one I've seen uh, argued is the Atlanta Falcons. Now, that might throw some people off, but it would tie in well with what they are building there. They are building a basketball team. They have got Kyle Pitts. They have got Drake London. They even went out and did like little things like they brought in Brian Edwards, who's that kind of style player. Brian Edwards not on a team right now, but you could see that's the road they're going down. So that's somewhere he might end up in. Who knows who's going to be throwing them the ball, but that could be a bit dangerous if it's you know the same kind of people there. And someone who might be throwing them the ball, interestingly enough, is one of our highest risers, all the way up now to number seven, moving up five spots, Anthony Richardson. This will continue, I think. I don't see him dropping out of the first round anymore. He is, you know, the more and more I'm watching these mock drafts and the more and more I'm watching the industry talk about him, the more and more people are, you know, moving him up ahead of Will Levis. And he's sort of establishing himself as the number three quarterback coming off the board. Now, full disclosure, he did move up so much because, you know, Reggie over at Destination Devi absolutely loves this guy. And, you know, I, I take that seriously because that guy really knows what he's talking about. So he did kind of bump him up the charts here. But Anthony Richardson, yeah, keep an eye on him because if he slides in your draft... That could be some really good value there. And again, it depends where he goes, right? If he goes to somewhere like the Colts, you're thinking that's a pretty good landing spot for Anthony Richardson, right? So you want to be careful where he lands, but people are liking this talent, and, and I have to agree. Um, let's have a little look now at, at number eight. Falling down two spots, it's the former Blindikoff prize winner. It's Jordan Addison. I think, again, Jordan Addison is probably going to go in your first round. And again, if you got one of those leader picks, you got to be pretty pleased picking up Jordan Addison. He is in a long list of wide receivers coming out that are just good, solid, reliable guys. Jordan Addison will go to a team. He will probably be the wide receiver too somewhere. I don't know if he's going to make it as this big kind of alpha receiver, but what we see now is that doesn't really matter. You know, teams like the Bengals can carry two wide receivers comfortably. Teams like the Eagles can carry two wide receivers comfortably. The NFL is a passing league. You know, it's been said to death. So he doesn't have to go somewhere and be this dominant, you know, alpha number one target. He can go there and be like a Devonta Smith kind of guy where he's open. Targets are drawn away from him by a bigger receiver somewhere. And, and he just gets peppered with those targets to, to score high fantasy points. So Jordan Addison, I think he'll be a really, really solid pick. Coming in at number nine, it's actually a non-mover. Will Levis stays at number nine. I still think that there is an excellent player there in Will Levis. I would be surprised if he is a starter next year. I think he's kind of one of those people that may need to sit. I don't know. Let me know if you think that's that's maybe slightly off, but I think he might need to sit for a year, learn just a little bit, and, and see how far we can get with Will Levis. So be interested to see what kind of team he goes to. Do the Minnesota Vikings draft someone like Will Levis? His kind of skill set, that would look really nice there at Minnesota. You could sit behind Kirk Cousins. That could be a good landing spot for Will Levis. But let's move on and see who's up next. Big, big riser up six spots. It's Zach Charbonnet. I really like Zach Charbonnet. I think he's a really solid running back. I don't think he's going to come in. I, aside from Bijan Robinson, I'm not sure any of these guys are going to come in and be that number one workhorse running back because that's just not what the NFL is like anymore. But with Zach Charbonnet, you know, he does have the skill set to at least be, you know, your first, second down running back because, you know, he's shown that he is powerful. He's shown that he has good speed and he's shown that, you know, his team can rely on him. You know, you watch highlights of him this year. It's, it's a Zach Charbonnet show a lot of the time. So before, obviously, he went, I think he got a little hurt towards the end of the year. So, 
yeah, Charbonnet, I really, really like him. I think he's a trustworthy back. I think he will get carries. And with that running back position, all he needs is an opportunity. So hopefully Charbonnet will go to a team where he gets good opportunity. But again, this could all change so much after you know the combine and after the draft. Those are the two things that will change so much. Uh, let's have a little look now. Pick number 11, rising up three spots. We got Josh Downs. Now, this is a player last time, last week, I said I didn't know too much about. So I went in and, and had a little look. Um, nothing major, just kind of casually watching. Um, I liked his cont contested catch ability. I liked his route running. I don't know. I haven't watched too much here. Let me know if I'm way off on this. I did not like his yards after the catch ability. Every time he caught the ball, he was on the floor almost immediately after. That's something that really stood to me. Again, I watched maybe four or five games of all his snaps. Yeah, I wasn't too impressed with his yards after the catch, and that is so, so important at the wide receiver position, you know, to rack up those fantasy points. Let me know if there is a game I should be watching. If you are familiar with Josh Dodds, send me a link or, or leave a comment saying, go watch this game, because that will show you his ability after the catch. So so that'll be really useful for me to see. But at the minute, he's he's going in the first round. So I got to be missing something, right? Industry-wide, people are taking him in that back end of the first round, high second round pick. So there must be something there I'm missing. So let me know what that is. Uh, next up, a guy whose ADP was all over the place. He ends up falling just one slot from last week. It's Keyshawn Butte. But he was, you know, going as high as pick number nine in some of the drafts. And as low as the third round in others. It evens out a pick number 12. This guy could go anywhere. People are worried about him. There is cause for that concern, I think, from what we've seen this year. But then there's that upside as well. So he has flashed. The problem with that is players who flash in college quite often, you know, they don't flash in the NFL. Is he just flashing against the bad teams and you know, there's no bad, you know, bad teams in the NFL. You know, the worst NFL team would wipe the floor with the best college team. So, yeah, that could be a bit of a concern there. He's someone at the minute, before I do more digging on, he's someone I think I will be avoiding, unless, you know, he does end up falling in the third round. Then you're thinking, right, okay, I'll take the value there. But for the moment, pick 12 is a bit too rich for me for, for Keyshawn Boutte. So let's move on to a guy moving up two slots, and I think actually... He's going to be someone who might end up just clinging on to the back end of that first round, sort of the second, when it comes to the actual draft. It's Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer, you know, the best tight end in this class, probably not my favorite tight end. Um, that's Dalton Kincaid, but he's not on this list, sadly. He's more of a third round kind of guy. Michael Mayer, though, definitely the best, you know, overall tight end. He's so well-rounded. He's a really good blocker. He's a really good receiver. He's got good speed. He's got great size. He's going to go pretty high in the NFL draft. He might even go in the first round of the NFL draft. I wouldn't be too shocked by that. It'll be interesting to see where he goes because he is so well-rounded and he is so good at everything. You know, we could end up with this kind of thing that happened to TJ Hawkinson when he was in Detroit where actually he was such a good blocker. George Kittle suffers from this sometimes as well. He's such a good blocker that he's not often used in the passing game. Hopefully that won't happen to Michael Mayer and teams will realize he is a receiving threat and not just using the block. But again, let's see where he ends up landing. But talent-wise, Michael Mayer is a really, really solid pick there. Let's move on to pick number 14. And and this is a guy that, you know, we talked about last time. We thought, oh, I wonder, wonder what this guy's like. It, it's Sean Tucker. So I did go in, I did a little digging. He's, he's moved on four places, dropping into the second round. So from what I've seen from Tucker is I actually expect this to rise right back up again after the combine in particular. You know, a lot of times people say, you know, the combine doesn't really matter too much. However, that 40 time and those results for running backs, that really does matter. Teams, you know, that pushes you up the draft. And what do we say all the time? If a running back's taken in the third, you know, third or day two running back in the third round, that's never really, you know, a good sign. A good combine can push you up and make you, you know, round one, make you round two kind of guy. So Tucker has the chance to do that if he, you know, uses that track speed that he's got 
in the combine. So I think that's really where his draft is going to be won and lost. So we'll see what happens with Tucker. Looks like a decent prospect. Um, another guy, this is a guy I really, really like. He's moving up four spots. I think that might continue to happen. Kind of a la Christian Watson last year is Jalen Hyatt. I did the same thing with Jalen Hyatt, what I did with um, Josh Downs. I really, really like what I see here. Really, really like. He looks fast. And again, that blazing 40 time that he's probably going to put up is really going to push him up. I love what I see. Almost the opposite of Josh Downs. I've seen excellent yards after the catch. I've seen a guy that, you know, while, you know, he's not necessarily the biggest guy in the world, he plays from the slot a lot. Those guys can win in the NFL line. Those guys can win in fantasy. So I'm going to be really keeping an eye on Jalen High. I've still got more work to do, but so far, so good. Really like what I see. And I pick number 15 here in the second round overall here. I think that's really good value for for a guy like Jalen High. And I'd love to see where he ends up because this guy could be really, really good, I think. And let's have a look now at you know the 16th pick here. We're in the second round. Pick number four, the second round. Moving up a whole five places. Look at that. Five places moving up. Kendra Miller going at pick number 16 here. You know, people obviously like what they see here. Kendra Miller, you know, kind of going a bit of a mixed bag here. Some take him the highest pick 11. Some as low as pick number 23. Kendra Miller, a guy. I still need to do a bit more tape study on Kendra Miller. What do you think of him? Leave a little comment below. Kendra Miller, what should I be looking out for? What do you think his main strengths are? What do you think his main weaknesses are? Let me know. Let me know. And next week, I'll have some comments about Kendra Miller after I watch a bit more of his tape. And moving up. Now, last week, I said last week this would happen. I absolutely called this. I'm so pleased. Moving up five spots. My guy, Devon A. Chain. I love watching this guy play. Someone's screaming he's too small. Yeah, probably. Right? He's, he's quite small. But I just love what he does with the ball in his hands. The, again, the combine... This guy, I just don't see how we've seen so many mistakes before based on good combine results. And teams in the NFL always seem to just draft these combine freaks. And A-Chain is definitely going to be one of those guys. I wouldn't be shocked if he goes in the second round of the NFL draft. And if he does, then that's going to push him up people's boards. I think he could be a real weapon. There's not a chance in the world that he is going to be, you know, the bell cow back anywhere. But he can come in. He can be a nice player. If there's an injury, he might have really big weeks. He could carve out a role in pass catching. He'll probably line up in the slot sometimes, maybe even. People are just going to want to get the ball in this guy's hands. I would love him to go, you know, to a Kansas City where Andy Reid gets a hold of him. That would be so much fun, right? So... Let's see where he lands. You want him to land with a creative coach who is going to scheme up players for him and get the ball in his hands. That would be really awesome. Um, let's go to pick number 18 here overall. Still in the second round, obviously. This is just two-round draft, so we'll end it pretty soon at pick number 24. But for now, staying in the same place, we're going to say Flowers. He did not, he had a 1,000-yard receiving year, which is pretty good. He was trusted by his team, which is always a good sign. There is a danger he could end up being a gadget guy, but he can also play downfield too. So I liked what I seen um, from Flowers here. Say Flowers. Yeah, again, combine score, that's going to really depend on what happens. Landing spot, that's going to depend where he ends up. But so far, I'm pretty impressed with Zay Flowers in the second round. I think that's maybe where he will stay, you know, in these, in this 23 class. I think he'll probably end up staying in that second round. I don't think he's quite good enough to push up into the back end of the first saying that one person did take him in the first round, not say who, but somebody did take him in the first round. I just don't see it. But let me know if you disagree, if you think Zeph Flowers could potentially be a first round talent. Next, the biggest faller in the entire process, a guy that we talked about last week, I said I did not understand how he was going this high. He went to position number eight last year. He's all the way down at 19 now. We got Zach Evans. And... I'm going to go out in a wimp here and say why. I don't 
think he's very good. From what I've seen, and again, I've watched about five games. He looks slow. That is the first word that comes to mind. I don't know who he's playing against. Maybe he was hurt. Maybe I watched the worst five games possible. I just picked him at random. But he looked slow. And at the Combine, if he runs a slow 40 time, there is a massive chance that he's going to slip into rounds four, five, six. And then you're in, you know, the dynasty dead zone. No one's going to pick you up there. This could be the start of a monumental slide for Zach Evans. Hopefully, people haven't done their early drafts where they've already drafted a startup and taken the rookies and taken him quite high. I just don't see it. Um, again, if you've got any advice, if you got somewhere where you think, no, go watch this game and you'll see, you know, he's not slow. Or go watch this game and you'll see, you know, that he doesn't have terrible hands. Or go watch this game. Let me know in the comments. But so far, I've seen nothing. So I would love to be proven wrong. I always like seeing the positive side of players. But I haven't seen much so far from, from Zach Evans. So let's move on to another guy who's really fallen down the ranks again. Seven places down. Tank, Bigsby. Do you know, this is going to sound maybe stupid. But I don't know. I sometimes think whenever people are doing a mock draft and they don't really know too much about the players. Does a guy like Tank Bigsby gets picked because you know people don't know anything about the remaining players? So they just pick a guy called Tank Bigsby because hey, his name's Tank. That's pretty cool. He's a tank playing running back. Eh. I don't know. I'll take a chance. Because I think that happens. I'm fairly sure in a tiebreaker where you don't know anything about anyone, you're just gonna pick a guy that stands out to you, and that guy's probably gonna be the guy called Tank. So now, I think a week later, more people have had a look and more people have maybe studied a bit more and know a bit more about Tank and he's sliding down the rankings. I actually, from what I've seen, I quite like the look of Tank Bigsby. I think he's quite well-rounded. I don't think there's any obvious holes in his game. I mean, for a guy called Tank, he's not a Tank, you know. He's not like a Derrick Henry type guy. But I've not seen too many weaknesses. He's well-rounded. I don't know. He could end up being like, you know, the next kind of Khalil Herbert if he ends up in the right place where he is well-rounded. He does everything quite well. And when given the opportunity in the NFL, he might actually be a good producer. So even though he's sliding, actually, I quite like what I've seen from Tank Bigsby. So he might he might end up rising up again. But I think in the back end of the second round, that's pretty good value for, for Tank Bigsby. So let's move on to a guy now who's in position number 21, going towards the back end of the second round, rising up to spaces we got Rishi Rice um he's another guy I've not quite got you know I've seen bits and pieces sort of clips of Rishi Rice but nothing for me to really you know put my foot down and give a huge opinion on so he's another guy I would like you let me know in the comments what do you think of Rishi Rice what kind of game should I be going out and watching what are his main strengths what are his main weaknesses leave a comment below and let me know at 22 we got a new entry a guy that did not make the list last week. We have got... No. I'm going to give this a go. We've got Abana. Abana Kanda. I think that's quite right, isn't it? I think I saw the commentators pronounce it. Abana Kanda. Running back. Guys, I've seen, again, clips of him. I'm currently kind of studying through as many college games as I can. I've not done a deep dive player study individual of him. I've seen some highlights of him playing in games. He looks pretty fast. He looks pretty explosive. He looked pretty good to me. I have a couple of notes on him in my overall grades that aren't quite finished. So far, it's mostly positive, but I need to do some more digging. So I've got some positives on him. Like, I think he looked quite quick, quite explosive. Any negatives on him? Any reason why you think all of a sudden he's exploded and has appeared at the back end of the second round? Or do you think, no, he should have stayed off the list? Let me know. Um, next, we got in at number 23, a guy we talked a bit about last time. Uh, we got Marvin Mims. Talked about, you know, he had a thousand yard season. He looks to be a pretty solid receiver. He's another guy, like a few others. It's going to depend where he goes. If he goes to a crowded room, he might not see the field too often. If he goes somewhere like the Houston Texans, where there is actually space for him to be a good receiver, that could be interesting. 
for a Marvin Mim. So I think for him, it's going to end up being, you know, landing spot dependent, which is kind of true for a lot of guys at the back end of the second round, really. So we'll see what happens with Marvin Mims. And then at the end, he just, just made it onto the list, falling seven places. It's Hayden Hooker. I don't think he's all that, guys, to be honest with you. I mean, sure, getting a quarterback at the back end of the second round, you might think that's good value. I don't know if this guy is going to go any further than being a backup quarterback. Maybe he'll get a year starting somewhere, but I've not seen it, to be honest. So let me know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't I don't think I don't think so. I would even be surprised if he ends up being at the back end of the second round. Once the NFL draft is over, I think he'll go somewhere where he's a clear and obvious backup and just people aren't going to be bothered to draft him. Um, let's have a look at some people who, who missed the list. Uh, we got Rakeem Jarrett. He's off the list from last week. He never made it back. Kenny McIntosh again never made the list. Tajay Spears. Dalton Kincaid, the guy I was talking about earlier, my favorite tight end. We got Tillman, Washington, Jared Hall, Deuce Vaughn, Gray. Xavier Hutchinson, he appeared a couple of times, but not enough to make the list. Any of those guys you think, they should have definitely, definitely made it onto the list. Let me know. And guys, that wraps up our 2.0 of the industry mock draft, taking the averages from trusted sites all around the world and, yeah, putting them in order. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for watching. Just like we said at the start, please leave a comment. Please leave a like. Let's, let's help me along the process here. Let me know what you think of these players. And if you can, be so kind hit that subscribe button as well. Let's get us on the way to our 200 target. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next week for 3.0 of this, where again, we'll be taking five industry experts, looking at their mock drafts and working out a player average. Let's see who the risers and fallers are. Okay. In the meantime, keep yourselves, keep your teams lit, and we'll see you very soon.